Uh, loading, I can start already. Uh, so yesterday we were asked to do a um, small presentation in which we would emphasize um, how to determine the likelihood of our problem in order to do the posterior analysis and to find out the value of information. And since that moment uh, we have been uh, working all the evening and then we have been sent to a dinner and <laughs> This morning we have been given a very, very interesting lecture and after that uh, we had a coffee break and during that coffee break I had the option to have coffee which would have been nice given the previous uh, uh, hours of my life or to do a presentation and I did that. So uh, I tried to put together in five minutes uh, 15 slides And let's see <laughs> how it goes. I don't promise anything. <laughs> okay. So this is the case study I've been developing the last uh, <clears throat> months uh, within the framework of this cost action. Um, it was in inspired by the case study that presented uh, Sebastian. <clears throat> Although his study was focused on decisions made during uh, operation and uh, the maintenance phase. And I used the same uh, idea but uh, uh, changed the decision context to the design phase. So in this case, it's a risk-based design of an offshore wind uh, turbine support structure using value of information. And we are, again, uh, regarding uh, the possible dynamic amplification with the 1P and 3P uh, regions and the associated reduction in the fatigue life uh, that the rotor excitation may cause to the structure. So um, I will not go in detail in this. It was, it's the same as uh, what Sebastian presented, we have uh, an uncertain, uh, we, we, we can uh, determine with uh, high uncertainty the first natural frequency, especially at the design phase. And we need to design uh, in this small uh, frequency uh, region in order to avoid uh, uh, the resonance hazard. So. Uh, how to do that? Uh, for onshore turbines, it was suggested to leave a certain uh, safety margin uh, with the boundaries of this region. But for offshore, uh, first the rotors are getting larger and larger, and therefore this region smaller and smaller. And second, uh, uncertainties in the estimation of the soil parameters in particular are much uncertain offshore. Uh, it's more expensive to inspect and therefore the uh, uncertainty associated with the estimation of the first natural frequency of the structure is larger at the design stage offshore. So uh, here we, I propose a risk-based uh, or to solve this um, following a risk-based uh, methodology and this is more or less the idea that I uh, addressed in this case study. So we have a probabilistic decision scenario. We have an uncertain uh, design performance uh, uh, of the structure. Um, and we have two ways of overcoming or to, uh, to manage that uncertainty. We can either invest in design, so to make it more reliable. Uh, in this, regarding fatigue, I refer to the term robustness. 
as a way of measuring, uh, yeah. if you say, if you think of a crack propagating, the thicker the section is, the more robust would be, uh, you would have more time to detect that crack, for, for example. Or a uh, second alternative is to invest in uh, acquiring more information. So we suppose there is going to be a trade-off between those two investments and an optimal solution can be found uh, uh, in between. Um, originally, this was the Bayesian network uh, I developed, just trying to think as many factors that could be involved, and then I would uh, simplify it to make it uh, tractable. So this was originally, I will not go through this so much, I don't know how much time is allocated for these presentations. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, you, you decide. Uh, you, you can press the button, <laughs> like in the X factor. Um, so yes, uh, in the end, this is the Bayesian network that I have, that I have solved. Uh, so let's go element by element. Um, we have a design set. So a series of designs have been proposed. I will show uh, in next slide, I think, uh, how I de determine or how I, yeah, what parameters determine one design. I have uh, the true state of the soil stiffness. Um, the soil stiffness and the design uh, yield a probability of failure. Um, in between, I skipped a few things. So given one design and an uncertain um, soil characterization, we would have an uncertain first natural frequency characterization. And in the end, it would lead to a estimation of the probability of failure. But I skipped this part in the Bayesian network. And I went directly for the probability of failure. So given that, there would be a risk associated with each design. Uh, each design is also associated with a certain cost. And additionally, there is the possibility to test the soil. So here, originally, I have a prior soil, soil uh, uh, characterization. I can uh, perform uh, tests, obtain more information about uh, the soil and uh, update the probability or the characterization of the uh, probability density function of the soil. And these uh, tests are, have some costs associated as well. So it's relatively similar to the problems we have been seeing uh, during the lectures. Uh, maybe there are some further uh, or more uh, interrelations than the basic ones, but the idea is, is not much more difficult. Uh, I will skip this. Um, so these are the designs. So this is our wind turbine. Uh, it has a fixed hub height. It has a fixed uh, water depth and a fixed penet penetration depth. Uh, the turbine is the reference uh, NREL 5 megawatt turbine. And also the position or the site in the, in the North Sea is fixed. Um, so I could have the environmental loading data. So uh, given that this diameter and thickness is uh, fixed also by the wind turbine manufacturer, I leave a very simplistic design to just fix the diameter and thickness at this uh, height. And I assume a linear transition uh, up to this point and a constant uh, uh, diameter and thickness until the, the bottom. Um, so given those assumptions, we only have to determine two design parameters. And I have modified them or created sensible range that would cover what I would consider a realistic uh, range of designs. 
So I have six designs in which the thickness is, uh, uh, keeps a ratio uh, d over t equals uh, 100. And additionally, I have considered the same diameters and I have modified the thickness by adding uh, uh, three millimeters. So in the end, I have 12 designs and I will do a risk-based decision uh, analysis. Uh, so the first step was to develop or create an FEM model in MATLAB uh, and to determine or to map the relation between the first natural frequency and the soil characteristics. Uh, note that this is wrong in this picture. Uh, I didn't have time to change, but this should be the uh, spring constant. I modeled the soil structure uh, interaction with linear uh, springs. So in the end, I came up with this plot in which the relation between the first natural frequency and this, uh, this spring uh, that models the soil structure interaction is mapped. And as you see, it's a nonlinear relation. Um, this omega min and omega max are the, uh, the values that in which the operational range happens. So this would be actually the first, the 1p uh, region. Uh, yes. And this would be between uh, omega max and three omega min would be the uh, actual, uh, what is called the soft stiff region. So the, the region in which we can make designs. So here. Uh, to do the dynamic uh, time integration, I wanted to do it as simple as possible, although not too unrealistic. So I didn't want to, to get into uh, elastic simulations or anything as such. So I decided to go for an integration of the uh, rotational sampling into the wind spectrum. So into the Kármán spectrum, I integrated the rotational sampling so I can reproduce the excitations of the blades and the, the full rotor, so the three blades. Uh, I also have the wave modeled by uh, John Swap, and I have uh, 11 uh, C lamp states modeled by a wavel, uh, or following a wavel probability distribution. Um, so these are uh, 11 fatigue fatigue design cases that I took from uh, uh, this uh, report uh, in which they use a similar, or they use the same turbine and similar characteristics. And so I chose the same position just to take the same uh, data. And this is the uh, very basic uh, 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 equation of motion. And I assume that the first uh, mode of vibration was uh, the one that covered most of the energy uh, that would uh, model the dynamic uh, <coughs> vibration of the structure. So I integrated the equation of motion in the time uh, domain, uh, assuming only the first uh, uh, mode of vibration is relevant. And I calculated for one hour time series uh, the fatigue damage uh, using uh, Palgrim minor sum. And I upscaled to the fatigue life. In this case, I consider a service life of uh, 20 years. So at the end, I end up with a fatigue life damage uh, estimation. And since I have an FE model to compute this uh, uh, time integration, the probabilistic modeling how to map that together, what I did was to, to generate realizations of the soil. And for each realization of the soil, I would run the model uh, one hour. So basically, for each design, I get to have one fatigue life estimation for each soil realization I generated. And in the end, I can map the fatigue life damage with the first natural frequency for each of the designs. So basically, now I have the mapping that I wanted. So I map something that I can relate to consequences with performance of, uh, uh, of the structure. 
So basically, I, map, I, I mapped between uh, dynamic amplification hazard to fatigue, which can be mapped also with consequences. And I just need a probabilistic definition of the soil in order to get a probabilistic definition of the first natural frequency and therefore unexpected fatigue life damage and unexpected uh, probability of failure. So uh, this is uh, the prior PDF of the soil. And given that prior, uh, I end up with a prior PDF of the first natural frequency for each design. Here I just put it six of them. Uh, so given that um, I can obtain the probability of failure per design and estimate the, the utility, the estimated utility, and find an optimum prior uh, design given the constraints of the model. So this, is, this was the first uh, part. But now, uh, if we go back to the Bayesian network, so we keep clear what we have solved. We have solved this uh, part of the Bayesian network, which is the, the, the prior um, knowledge or the, the prior informed uh, risk-based decision uh, problem. Now we need to model uh, the value of information part. So the most challenging part is to be able to, to map between uh, inspections and your decision parameters, so to, to, to be able to, to represent the likelihood function. And uh, this Bayesian network is only used in discrete uh, uh, CPT, so uh, I also need to discretize uh, this likelihood function. So uh, this is not based on uh, data, it's just built on uh, let's say, given uh, join uh, likelihood. Uh, but the idea is that in the vertical axis, we can have an indicator of the uh, soil stiffness that can map with the soil stiffness. And if I discretize, as I have discretized the prior information, so I have the soil can be soft, can be medium, or can be stiff. I can also integrate, uh, uh, I can represent the likelihood function as a, a conditional uh, probability table. So I end up with this conditional probability table. Uh, yes. And this would be the posterior uh, PDF of the soil stiffness. So yeah, I didn't have time to put more slides <laughs> in five minutes. But uh, yes, I think if we are to discuss something, uh, here is the, the, the most, uh, or the part I found more, most challenge and I haven't figured out completely. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs>